Google just released Antigravity. It's a new IDE based on autonomous agentic AI platform that can fully code for you or with you. And this is how I used it to automatically create this simulation of three AI Atlas interstellar comet and the results were absolutely amazing. In this video, I'm going to show you how we can start using Google Antigravity to fully create anything you want autonomously and empower yourself with this amazing tool. Let's check it out. Google Antigravity is a new wipe coding tool based on agentic capabilities. So similar to other wipe coding agentic tools like Cursor, Windsurf, now this is Google's version, which is fairly new. So what you need to do to get a start, you just need to go to antigravity.google and then you can just download and install it locally in your laptop and start for now, as I'm recording the video, using it for free. As soon as you download and install, you will start the setup process. So first it's going to ask you that, would you like to start from fresh or you want to import your settings if you're already using VS Code or Cursor. So you have the options of import them here or start from fresh. The next step is setup is that how you can control if you want to. The next step of the setup will let you how you want to control these AI agents when they do the work for you. So you can have fully agent driven development that is mainly AI agents do the work for you. They code, run the code. So you just got to be there with minimum interaction potentially, or you want to have it agent assistant development. So you want to be there like code develop with the agent, which is the default choice, or you want to have it fully reviewed even or some custom configurations if you want to specify. With clicking any of them as your preference, you have additional settings on the right side. So what's gonna be the terminal execution policy? That means, would you like the model or the AI agent run code in your terminal? Yes, no, or auto. That means the agent decide by itself when to run and how to run. Or if it needs to ask your review or just agent decide by itself, there is no review needed from you, I can go just execute it. So you can set up with your flexibility here and go to the next step. And after successful authentication using your Gmail account, you can start now onto Gravity for free. This is the idea you will see, which is very similar to VS Code. So you can have your file getting imported. You can open a folder, clone a repo. You can fork, you can have extensions getting installed. So very similar to VS Code experience. And you can just open the folder from here and specify where you want to code and you're good to go. But I would say the main part is on the right side, which is this agent manager. I can open it actually this part to make it bigger. This is, I would say, the new part that gives you that agenty experience of wipe coding. So on the left side, let's start one by one. You can see my inbox, which is the list of all the interactions and different type of conversations, agenty questions and tasks that I had or different applications here. It's like the inbox of activities of workloads that I had in Antigravity. If you want to start a new conversation, just click on start. And then you can specify if you want to have the conversation mode be able to planning so agent can plan before or fast so agent just execute uh, whatever it's needed. And talking about agents, the models that you can use as of now is Pro Gemini 3, high or low, that means it's about the thinking mode if you want to have it pretty high, deep thinking for complex tasks or not too much, you want to make it faster. Cloud Sonnet 4.5 and Thinking Cloud and GPT open source is also available as of now I'm recording as list of models that you can choose them to let them create anything you want through this agentic experience. Now we can also add additional image or mention any specific file that you have in the system like outside here so you can give additional context or do some context engineering when you want to actually develop anything with this uh, Google Antigravity. Now on the, on the workspace, this is sort of your isolated environment that you want to do a specific project with AI agents on a specific folders or path. So you can open a new one if you want to, or if you don't want to create a workspace for now, you just want to start with a playground, chat with AI agent, do something, do some tests, and later convert it to workspace, then you will use playground. So here, let's say I want to start with a playground, and the very first, first thing that you're going to do is that what type of tools these agents has access to so they can do the work for me. So I want to ask, tell me list of tools you have access. All right. 
You will be surprised that, of course, web search and doing research live on internet data is one of the uh, tools that they have, but also on the top, they, it's much more empowered with other tools that you wouldn't even think about it. So firstly, it can really do a lot of stuff in your code base. So it can uh, read files, write files. I'm not going to talk about that. These are typical things that you consider when you want to have autonomous HNT workload do the job for you. It can run codes in the terminal. These are the commands. This is the part that it can go to internet, do browsing and do search. It can complete the task. And also it can generate image. So you will see my test that how AI agent can generate image because they have an image generator tools that can be used for designing UI or based on your project. This is gonna be extremely helpful. And talking about tools, one of the very distinguished feature or tools of this anti-gravity is browser. So this browser, if you click on it, it open up actually your anti-gravity browser in Chrome. So technically anti-gravity has access to your browser so it can launch the apps automatically, test them. It can record actually screenshots or videos out of the app when it is running that and testing for you. So you will see that in action. You, by the way, you have to install an extension. If you open it for the first time, it will ask you here that, hey, let me install it for you. I have done that already. That's why you're not asking me. So after you're done, this is what you will see when you click on the browser uh, feature of Google Anti-Gravity. All right, getting back to the main editor again, this is very similar to VS Code as we discussed. You have the edit part here. We can also toggle and you see the terminal. So you, you have the control of developing by yourself and you have this nice agentic part, which I just opened in a bigger version, which is uh, uh, agent manager, which is like your main mission critical uh, control place that you can manage all these AI agents and then on the top if you can click on list of available tools that's actually referring to the conversation we had it's just minimized here something that I would love to highlight is that you can add MCP servers inside under gravity as well so when you code these AI agents have additional tools to actually execute for you if you click on the three dots on the agentic side on the on the right you can see that there's a section called MCP servers and it has nicely list of MCP servers that I can just install them and run it. I can see a lot of Google oriented MCP. So if you have data spaces on uh, GCP, Google Cloud, like Spanner, Postgres, or BigQuery, I can see a lot of them are actually listed here. And also third party tools like PayPal, Perplexity. Just go through them. As of now, I'm recording the video. This is the list, but I'm pretty sure this part is going to be evolving as anti gravity is becoming more mature. All right, so let's go back to the main part, which is agent managers. I can click on open. This is my agent manager. This is the inbox we discussed about, but I want to start with the playground. We already asked that what tools you have access to. I have my first task to give it a shot. So here's my task. I want to ask that go to NASA web page and clone their UI and recreate it for me. So do your best to make it as similar as possible to NASA websites and then run it for me. Also make sure you test it at the end. One nice feature of Google Onto Gravity is that it first gives you the plan, we will see that, but also at the end it will verify for you that I did the job correctly with running it. So let's actually hit enter. By the way, I want to choose, yeah, Gemini 3 Pro, uh, Pro High is fine for me. And I am good to go. So I click on send. You can see live in action the progress that agents are creating files for you. You can review the changes on the right side here and you can see also the artifacts getting generated. So I can also toggle the terminal so you can see if in case model runs anything in the terminal. It is asking me that I want to do something or run this. I would say always hello. So I just said always hello in, and it went through my browser and my hands are up. It's just controlling my browser by itself. And I believe it's taking screenshots or maybe uh, recording video actually to get to know actually how NASA UI looks like. So I think it's supposed to be done soon. And this is again a very distinguished feature of an ID that I have never seen in, other, in any other web coding agentic platforms. So I think that task is done. It's actually opening another tab for me here. So I can just bring it all the way here to show you. You can see that it is actually recording. So I don't want to um, affect it with just clicking on anything. Again, hands all up, let it record, let it understand what is NASA website. Then I will go back to the agent manager to see what it's doing exactly with recording this and how it's progressing. I believe it's done because it's turned off. So let me go back to Anti-Gravity. 
you can see that it is telling me that hey I want to go to this website take a screenshot and I think I believe it did already so I can also click on view to see the artifacts that is getting generated at this at each step and let's see how it goes meanwhile if you want to see in action what files are getting created just click on this one open editor that's the part that you can also be in charge and control how the agent is behaving so so far i can see the agent manager again it's still there we can see agent working but here i can see the files so the first thing was the tasks that are getting generated this is the first artifact we got the second artifact we got was implementation plan and whenever you're not happy with anything here you can just comment there type that hey i'm not happy with this step change it modify it and when you add your comment your agent will take it that what was your comment on what a specific part of code or task or plan it will reflect it and do it again for you to make that revised version so if you want to see the whole list of artifacts getting generated if you all the way come here you can click on artifacts you will see beside these tasks and implementation I have lots of other artifacts getting generated. Some of them are pictures, some of them are videos. Those are the uh, screenshots that we just saw. You check this out. It is a video that it recorded by itself to understand NASA's website. All right, I gotta wait a little bit more to see how it goes, and I can also open the terminal. You can see how it goes, but let's see how it performs. So I just wanna click on accept. You can see that I have that mutual code development. I am in review agent decide when i need to review and accept so i click on accept by the way you can control your sensitivity how much you want to get involved in agent manager setting there you go you can also you can see the, all the settings at the beginning that you said we can change it your review policy your terminal command execution what you want to let ai agent has access what they shouldn't have access so it's all up to you you can define it in the setting let's go back to the agent manager it's still running it's still working I can see on the left side the codes and artifacts getting generated in my directory. I can click on any of them and see the preview here. I can comment on any of them. Let's actually open, for example, a code. You can see that this is my index.html. And then after that, on the right side, I can see agents are thinking and running and doing some processing. So I want to wait a little bit. I'm expecting to that to be finishing very soon. So we'll see how it worked. Check this out. At the middle of the process, it realized that, oh, I need to generate an image maybe to make it something similar to NASA background image. So it's generating that image using Gemini and it is actually propagated. So in live, I can see what tools it's getting called and how it is developing that. And having all these tools coming in here, doing all this stuff for me is really amazing. So I can't wait to see the final results. Let's continue. There you go, the image just got created, so it got it nicely based on NASA style as it prompt. And I can see what's the next. So moving assets and building HTML, that's what it does right now. And check this out, right now I realize that it opened what it created for me automatically by itself and took a screenshot to see how it works. It is running locally on my computer. This is not NASA's website. This is a clone version of that with this image generated by Gemini that I showed you. And check this out. This is absolutely amazing. It did a pretty great job without me doing anything. So you can see that it was testing for me. And there you go. It, I think, yes, it took a screenshot and generated this walkthrough for me. So walkthrough is a verification to tell you that, hey, I, as an agent, did the job correctly for you. And here's the proof. So you will always get this walkthrough artifact at the end. You can ask to generate that and accept all the changes here. And you can see that, hey, I have successfully cloned NASA's homepage and here's the proof. So it took a screenshot when it opened my browser at the bottom of the page and how to run it. Again, I, I couldn't believe that this is not NASA's website before even just checking out this local host. This is truly inspiring. And even all these images are generated by Gemini. The only piece which is, is NASA logo, I think it downloaded that from internet, but the rest is really, really surprising. That was our first task getting successfully finished. The second idea that came to my mind is that if it has access to web search, how about simulating actually 3i Atlas interstellar comet? So if you don't know what this is, recently NASA figured out that there is a, a comet that is coming into our solar system that might be billion years older than our solar system. So 
it is the third time in history that we are capturing something coming from another universe to our solar system and it had some very weird behaviors of different new sort of particles that getting generated out of it and scientists couldn't really verify if that's a comet or maybe it's a new species or aliens or uh it's a spacecraft that's coming from another world so there are a lot of rumors or i i don't know none of them has been proven yet but it's a lot of topics and papers hundreds of them within just a couple of months ago got published for it if you have uh, interest on space as i do definitely check this out so why not simulating that based on real data that we know based on researchers that they have published their results in internet so that was really my whole goal i had this initial version actually running right now in my local machine so let me show you how for this one that i created before recording this video i use the same prompt but i use a low thinking model so i want to make it fairly quick i didn't want to really emphasize too much on what i am designing so it made it very quick there is no deep complex demo here but i'm pretty sure it can do much better than this if i just switch the model but still you can see that this interstellar is getting simulated right now live it's not complete yet the codes are running right now because i just entered the prompt and these numbers are getting calculated based on metrics that are real based on web search for example the potential average speed of this comet its accelerator sort of its angle that it goes around the sun right now they have been used to simulate that hey in future where would be the position of this relevance to the sun but again this was just one example to show you what you can do literally the sky's the limit to whatever you want to create with this new great ID that just got dropped by Google. And yes, Google did it again. All right, that was all about this video. I hope you found it helpful. If yes, I would be very thankful if you click on like icon and share your thoughts in comment section and subscribe so you won't miss the next video. Thank you so much.